always thought myself lucky to be able to apprentice under Envoy Kaja. Usually by the time an Envoy Magnus reaches the Elder's Council, they don't take on any more students. At that stage, their sole focus is usually just planning and implementing expeditions given by the Elder of that library. Mikhail Kaja made an exception for me. He was a Magyar man, a bit younger than my father. When my father passed on, in many ways, he stepped into the role. He had been a friend of the family for a long time. I could always trust his judgment and advice. With my initial impressions of Contus Germanica 7 completed, I brought my reports in to Envoy Kaja for his review and chronicling. I rode my chariot into town. The family home is several leagues away from the city center, so it saves time in my daily commute. There's a stable building behind the towers of the library where I'm accustomed to leaving it. Both terms are anachronistic leftovers from the times of the early Principes. Only occasionally will a live horse be found tied there. Often they are a faithful steed or part of a family line of animals maintained through the centuries. Our family used to have a few, but the last of them died out with my grandfather. Mechanization is like the creeping ocean, always wearing away at old edifices. Most of those needing personal transportation opt for a chariot. Like the back of a stallion, the mechanical marvel offers a comfortable ride and can float nearly three times as fast as your average racehorse. It is also much more sanitary, replacing a depleted battery than shoveling waste. Plus, there's no more languish in overworking the Jovian channels of the vehicle. There's something liberating about chariots. I can circle the city every day if I want to, see all of Menachium from every side. It can cross greater distances too, but not nearly as comfortably as a litter or barus. I made my way up the staircase, circling the foyer, and eventually reached Envoy Kaja's chambers to present my reports. He spent a good amount of time reading through my notes and reviewing my narratives of each team member, before eventually setting down his spectacles and speaking openly with me. As he spoke, I became further convinced that my appointment in this contus in particular was not accidental. The higher than average mortality rate is concerning. Envoy Carl Beinholtz also apprenticed under Kaja, so I believe the loss affected him even more than he initially let on. He asked for me to recount each of my conversations with team members regarding the circumstances of his death. He seemed disappointed that the acidic sting of the dragonfly-like creature proved to be true. I asked him pointedly if he expected to find Decanus Nucci responsible for foul play. He did not answer me. Instead, he decided to request full Lorica Tetra armor for all members of the Contus, including Nucci. It's an unusual circumstance. Tetra armor is usually reserved for teams specializing in search and destroy missions. They are specialists in exterminating hostile fauna of all kinds. Up to this point, most of our interactions with foreign wildlife have been incidental. I asked him if the nature of our assignments would reflect the new armament. He answered me honestly. Yes, most likely. I asked him why the additional protection would matter then. To quote on Voikaja directly, we shall feed the glutton. If Nucci's aim is simply to sate his bloodthirst, then those arrangements can be made, and the rest of the Contus can keep their distance as they desire. As the missions go on, Nucci will either be satisfied, or he will face a foe he cannot overcome, and be humbled back into his senses. In my opinion, it felt like a needlessly complex way to solve the problem. If Nucci is failing as a Decanus, then why not revoke his commission? Once again, Envoy Kaja did not answer me. I now suspect that the Decanus has friends in high places, either in Legio Germanica or perhaps even the Ministerium. Regardless, I think the plan may be successful. I think each of them have within their Thumos a fighting spirit. They're simply better at keeping it caged or repurposed than Nucci does. Because we were having a discussion on changing armaments, I asked Envoy Kaja if he could look into the situation with Eva McGlasson and the shipmaster of Hamonia. He said he would, but made no promises. Kaja is only as influential as he can convince Elder Randolph, and even then the other envoys on the council could put up resistance in swaying his sensibilities. Still, I appreciate him putting in the effort. 
As I was rising to leave, Kaja had one more task for me. He presented me with a Nasilaber in a sealed case. The information crystal was to be hand-delivered to the library in Berga, specifically the new archivist of the Deep Vault. Envoy Kaja also suggested getting to know this archivist, saying their predecessor was a good friend of his, who became a valuable resource over the years. I agreed and left his chambers. I crossed the catwalk along the west side of the library's main atrium. Kaj has been relocated to a study on the third floor, which held an incredible view of both the inside and outside of the building. I circled down the staircase in the foyer and bid the receptionist farewell. The large doors open up to a bridge crossing the Isar River, which leads to the main forum of the city. Instead, I turn north and follow the river a few blocks up to a favorite bistro of mine, where I can sit and relax, or rather, think. I'm very grateful for my commission, and know I've been presented many opportunities, but a growing part of me feels unsettled. It could be that I'm simply coming to terms with what day-to-day -day life as an envoy truly entails, in the same way others perform tasks for the Asclepium, or Archimedium, or Classis Germanica, or the Elementarsium, I knew I would have tasks involving the operations of the libraries at home. But it's not note-taking or record-keeping. It's the Ministerium itself. Perhaps foolishly, I've always seen it as a monolith, a single organization working for our collective good by keeping the monsters away. But my conversation with Kaja has left me feeling quite the opposite. That there are factions at work, with their own agendas and motives. My task in Berga seems to be less about a simple courier assignment, and more about gathering information on this new archivist. I shall prepare for the trip tonight. I may need to get a warmer cloak. Signed, Ulysses Adelbrecht, Envoy, Contus Germanica 7, 3, September. 2403. Even then I could see the inklings of the deeper issues at play, but it would be many years before those weeds would burst through the marble our society was built on. I think I feel the most regret for Kaja. He was so clever in working these social machines within the Ministerium, but ultimately he too would be pulled into the clockwork to be crushed like so many others before him. Still, without him I would not have survived up to this point. I would not even be in a position to properly chronicle his sacrifices. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that now. <laughs>